You got a friend in me. You got a friend in me. Sometimes the road looks tough ahead and you're miles and miles from your nice warm bed. Just remember what your old pal said. Yeah, you got a friend in me. Welcome back to Ever Does Movie Ever. My name is Justin. I'm watching Ever Does Movie Ever today. I'm going to talk about Toy Story 3. Toy Story 3 is a 2010 animated theatrical release. It is about Andy being all grown up in his toys trying to find out where they belong. It is directed by Lee Unkrich. Animation supervision by Bobby Podesta and Michael Venturini. Editing by Ken Schretzman. Music by Randy Newman. And it's written by Michael Arndt. The film stars Tom Hanks as Woody, Tim Allen as Buzz, Joan Cusack as Jesse, Ned Beatty as Lotso. Don Rickles as Mr. Potato Head, Wallace Shawn as Rex, John Ratzenberger as Ham, Estelle Harris as Mrs. Potato Head, Michael Keaton as Ken, and Jodie Benson as Barbie. Disney owned all of Pixar's characters that they had created, so in 2004, when a split between Pixar and Disney was likely, Michael Eisner took Toy Story 3 to a different animation studio called Circle 7 Animation where they moved forward with Bradley Raymond as director with a script by Bill and Sherry Steinkellner for Toy Story 3. And it was a whodunit murder mystery type, uh, but they ended up not going forward with that, and, but were so impressed with it, they considered it for a fourth installment. They ended up getting um, a final script at Circle 7, which was about Buzz being shipped to a factory recall center in Taiwan and how the toys had tried to go rescue him. But then Pixar and Disney ended up merging with the purchase and all the stuff being shuffled around and John Lasseter becoming in charge of, you know, Walt Disney Animation killed that and they retook over Toy Story 3. They didn't even look at what was written and John Lasseter, um, Andrew Stanton, P. Doctor, and Lee Unkrich went to a cabin where they had originally come up with the idea and were trying to bounce ideas about a third one. They decided to scrap their idea for a third one and sit down and rewatch both one and two and restart with the third idea and Andrew Stanton wrote the treatment. John Lasseter ended up giving Lee Unkrich sole director credit because John Lasseter was way too busy <laughs> with a bunch of other Pixar projects and also being the head of Walt Disney Animation, um, you know, part. And then Unkrich then became so anxious to make Pixar's first dud because they had all been, you know, out of the park successes. So he was very anxious to make their, not to make their first dud. Um, Tom, Tim, and John Ratzenberger were brought in and shown a story reel to try and convince them to sign on for the third one. After completing the story reel, they all signed on immediately. They couldn't use their original computer files because they were so old and couldn't be opened on their newfangled computers. So they had to start from scratch and a ton of research and development was done to be able to do the complex junkyard scene. And then art director Daisuke Tsutsumi is married to Hayao Miyazaki's niece who is the inspiration for May in My Neighbor Totoro, which is why Totoro is one of Bonnie's toys. The film has a 98% Rotten Tomatoes consensus reading, deftly blending comedy, adventure, and honest emotion of rare second sequel that really works. It was nominated for Best Picture, Best Adapted Screen, Best Sound Mixing or Editing, I don't remember, One Best Animated and Best Original Song, so it was obviously also nominated for those. It had a $200 million budget and made $1.06 billion dollars in the box office. This is stunning, absolutely gorgeous to look at. I feel like that's just like what you guys are gonna get from me from now on. Like, it's stunning. The lighting is ridiculous. The toys look even better. The humans look a lot better than they used to. It just is all so beautiful. The junkyard scene, which required all the, you know, research and development and all that kind of stuff. The way that they get the screen to look hazy because of how hot the heat is. Um, how you even replicate that on a screen is insane. I think that's crazy that they were able to do that. And it's just really beautiful and gorgeous. The music was fantastic as per usual. The song in the incinerator scene is so insane. I can't, it's so good. Like it has no right to be as perfect as it is in that scene. It's excellent. 
I took next to no notes watching this. And by next to no notes, I mean the note app in my phone had I'm already sad at the beginning and then I didn't take another note. Okay, I saw this in theaters. Let's, I'll, I'll talk about that in a minute. This is so well written. It's my favorite Toy Story movie. I'm not crazy about the Toy Story movies. I know I've talked about that for one and two. And then I can't wait till y'all hear what I think about Toy Story 4. That's probably that much. But it might be a hot take, but this is my favorite. I think it is so well done. I think it's like the culmination of the beautiful stories that are the Toy Story stories. And I think everyone is perfectly their character in this. And I just think it was such a perfect closing chapter to the Toy Story verse, if you will, um, that I think making a fourth one was an actual crime. Uh, and then when we get to the fourth one, I'll tell you my opinion of the fourth one. This is so well written. It's so well done. The story is so good. The, the toys trying to make peace with Andy being grown up and what they're gonna do now. And the fact that they're all like, okay, we're gonna be in the attic, like that's okay. We just don't wanna be in the garbage, you know? Like you're worried about what's gonna happen. And it's also just such a great commentary on as you grow up having to close that chapter on just being the most imaginative, fun self you were and taking on these responsibilities and like stopping playing with your toys and all that kind of stuff and how I think I think at least how I take it is just like we all have that kid inside us still and like we just have responsibilities thrown at us that take away our time to be able to be that kid inside us still and everything like that so I don't know I just love this movie I saw this in theaters in 2010, so I would have been about 16 or 17 probably, so I would have been the same-ish age as Andy, because Andy's 17, they say in the movie. So depending on when this came out, I would have been... Yeah, I would have been turning 17, I think. Yeah. I would have been turning 17 in September of 2010. So it was like, literally I was Andy's age. I wasn't going to college yet. I was a sophomore slash junior, depending on the time of year in high school, but it was very much meant for like my era of people. And it's just, I remember sobbing during the incinerator scene, like ugly sobbing. And then I remember like crying when he gave the toys to Bonnie and like played with her. And so that were, those were the only parts of this movie that I remembered and that like there was an evil bear. Like those were the only parts I really vividly remembered going into it. And so to see it all from beginning to end again as a 30 year old adult, <laughs> ooh. Ooh, incinerator scene, dude. Dang, that hits different. And as a kid who like, well, as an adult who doesn't really have a lot of her childhood toys, I've got some stuff. I have some stuffed animals. Like I've got a fair amount of stuffed animals, but I didn't play with those. I just like loved my stuffed animals. Um, I think I have, I have my beanie baby somewhere and I played with those a decent amount. But like, I don't have like the Barbies I played with. Those are long gone. I gave those to some kid, I think. And you know, I don't have a lot of my childhood like toys that I really loved, but I wasn't a big toy player. I was much more like a singer person. And I played pretend with my friends. I feel like it's the bigger thing I did. But it just hits, you know, it's just so good and it's so well written, fam. My favorite part by far and away is Andy playing with Bonnie with his toys that he's giving her because it's like this one last final goodbye. Like the Woody and the gang had been dying for Andy to play with them. And like, they get it. And it's like, this transition to like being Bonnie's toys. I don't know, it's just so beautiful. 
My least favorite part has to be the incinerator purely just because of it's so emotional. <laughs> it's so sad. But also Lotso like not stopping the thing after Woody saved him. Like that's really just what a terrible villain. Um, watch again, a hundred percent. Recommend it. Absolutely watch this. Specific moments, Barbie crushed it in this movie. Like, and there were multiple things Barbie did that I was like, foreshadowing to the future Barbie movie? Like, oh my God. Um, Mr. Tortilla Head took me out. I forgot that he like put himself on a tortilla. That made me laugh. Uh, the two horror scenes in this, whoa, the scene where they're like sneaking out and the baby fully turns its head around. Like that was terrifying. So good. It was just fun that they were like two horror movies. It just, like, it's just good. This whole movie is so excellent. I, I vividly remember a good chunk of this. And then as I was watching, I remembered a lot and was like, oh yeah, oh yeah. So that was all really fun. Uh, I did, I cried. I cried during the incinerator scene. I cried when Andy like played with Bonnie. Oh man, big time, big time cries. That's everything I have for Toy Story 3. I, it's just good. It's excellent. My final rating is 10 toys out of 10. Our total movie count is, our cry count is. <laughs> Parent death is still the same. If you want to keep up with the movie I'm watching when, follow me on all socials. You'll find out what movie I'm watching when. I put out videos every Monday and Friday and sometimes Wednesday. Join Patreon. I got a tier starting at just one dollar. You get every video a week early. A coupon code for merch, exclusive merch access. Tiers above that, you get daily trivia, bonus content, monthly postcards, etc., etc., etc. Buy merch. Merch is great. Merch is grand. There isn't a parent death toll in this, but it had been a minute since I wore the shirt, so I wore it. Until next time, comment, like, subscribe, but I'm not in charge of your life. You are, so do you, and don't be lotso about it until the very end. Getting strapped to that truck is, like, better than he deserves, to be perfectly honest.